the Harley Benton Single Cut or Les Paul style guitar kit. Unboxing and initial impressions. Harley Benton make entry level, mid range and kick guitars for Tom Mann who are based in Germany. However, according to the website, Tom Mann are Europe's biggest online provider of musical instruments. In future videos, I hope to be unboxing, reviewing and constructing various other kits from other providers and other makers. So keep your eyes open for these videos. I'll be doing a Gear for Music one next. When I bought this kit, I also bought an SC or the SG version at the same time and the box they came in was absolutely huge. I'll do a quick comparison between the two kits at the end of this video. The SC or single cut kit is a Les Paul copy, however I'm guessing they don't call it this for legal reasons. Right, let's look how it was first boxed. And you'll notice I've just put the box here on the desk and taken a picture of it because it's just so big I can't get cameras around it and I can't video it. Remember though that this box contains two kits, but the reason I'm showing it you here is just to point out it is very very strong and protects all the contents really well. Right, let's have a look at the contents of the box. And inside the box are three separate boxes. One is for the neck, one is for the body and one is for the hardware. Also inside the main box was two copies of the instructions to put the guitar together. One's in German and one's in English, so I'll be using the English one obviously. Looking at the instructions, they look really well laid out and nice and clear with big clear pictures showing you what to do. However, I'll reserve full judgement on this until we actually start putting the guitar together to see how the instructions match up with what we've actually got in the box. First of all though, I'll flick to the front page where it shows you the contents of this kit and we'll just check everything's there. Right, let's take out these three boxes and then inspect the contents. We'll start by opening up the neck and having a look at that. Inside its box, the neck is wrapped with bubble wrap, keeping it really well protected. So, let's take the bubble wrap off so we can have a better look. I can tell you straight away, the neck is really well finished. It's really smooth, back and front, and it seems to be sealed with a satin finish. Now, this could actually be a finished neck if you wanted it to be. There is some white powder on the fingerboard, however I'm assuming this is just dust from the factory and it polishes off really easily anyway. The frets have been nicely crowned and edged, so you could actually just pick up this, put it on a guitar and play it, which is really nice because if you're building a guitar I would have thought the hardest part is actually getting the neck right and they've done most of that for you. You could run your hand up and down the edge of the neck without fear of them catching on the frets because they've been edged off really nicely. The only thing I could suggest you could possibly do is polish the frets maybe just for aesthetic purposes or to make it more smooth running when you're doing tremolo and bends. Of course, if you wanted to, you could spray the whole neck with a high gloss finish with something like nitrocellulose, but this is a lot of expense and a lot of work. Even so, I might actually do that with this neck. Right, let's move on to the body now and unpack that and take a good look at that. Just like the neck, inside the box the body is wrapped in bubble wrap to prevent it from getting dented or scratched. The body is really quite heavy and seems to be made out of a really nice wood and the overall construction is really good as well. 
It's got a nice binding around the front edge, but unfortunately that's peeled away slightly near the neck. I can only assume they've checked the neck fitting in the factory and this has caused that binding to come away slightly. This is obviously slight damage and I could send it back and it'd be replaced. However, because I've got to finish the body anyway, I might as well just fix it myself. The wood the body's made of seems really good and the grain is really nice and there's no horrible flaws like knots or hollows. However, remember the body is unfinished so the first thing you're going to need to do is sand it because the finish isn't uniform. Some places it seems quite smooth and in other places it seems more unfinished. Something they've done to the body which you might like or dislike is that they've sealed the wood. Now this could save you a fortune because by properly sealing the body whatever you're going to finish it with won't sink into the wood it'll sit on the surface so it'll take less coats. However if you're using an alternative finishing method you might find it bubbles or reacts with whatever they've used to seal it. Hopefully they'll tell us in the instruction what it is otherwise it might be a case of trying the finish the final finish you want to use on it in a very small area to see if it will settle or if it'll react with the undercoat. All the holes and rootings seem present and correct so it looks like you could bolt this whole guitar together in a couple of hours and have it up and running which is quite nice if that's what you want. I really like the look of the grain on this body and I think you could probably get by with a clear lacquer or a little bit of stain in a clear lacquer. However remember every single one's going to be different cause no two pieces of wood are the same. Just as a point of note if you like the binding and want to preserve it you'll have to mask it off properly if you're using a solid colour or a stain and this will just add a little bit of complication to the project. So far so good the neck and the body I'm really pleased with and actually for the price they've turned out to be really good value. So let's look at the hardware box and what's inside there. Straight away I'm a little concerned because the hardware has been left to rattle around in a box which is considerably larger than the content. On the positive side however they've thrown in a lead which if you haven't got one is very useful or if you've got a better quality one it's useful just to keep around as a spare. I'll just lay everything out so we can have a good look at it. As I suspected, with all the banging around and the heavy metalwork, some of the plastic has become damaged, but fortunately it's only one of the knobs, which has broken clean in half more or less. So, I'll contact Tommen and see what they have to say. Well, I can't criticise Tommen regarding their customer support. I told them what had happened, and straight away they sent out a replacement part, and here it is. So let's continue with the review and we'll take out each of the individual components and look at them in more detail. We'll start by taking a look at the pickups which are fairly well wrapped. They've put these inside bubble wrap and then if you look at the actual chrome surface they've stuck a thin film on there. So if you peel that back you can see the chrome surface is really nice and it seems to have a good depth of chrome. The pickups are pre-mounted to the pickups around which will make the job of fitting them a little bit easier. And the springs for the pickup adjustments seem quite strong which is really good because if they're too weak you can get vibrations or the pickups moving around easily. So all in all the pickups are really quite nice. Uh, you'll notice on the back of the pickups they're actually marked with an N and a B. N stands for neck and that's the pickup that goes by the neck obviously and the B goes by the bridge. I've got one slight criticism of the pickups and that is that there's only two wires coming out of them. This means if you're more creative or more advanced and you wanted to put a coil tap or wire them in a slightly different way you can't. 
and because it's two wires right the way back into the pickup you can't uh, pick up at any point just to make these changes but in fairness this kit is for beginners and it's perfect for that job because it's not offering any unwanted complications all of this being said I might not actually use these pickups on the finished guitar even though I'll be fitting them first in order to review them I've got a pair of zebra stripe pickups that I bought a while back and I think they'd look really nice on this guitar next let's take a look at the wiring loom the wiring loom looks all intact and ready to go they've soldered everything in place quite neatly and you've got everything from the jack plug through the volumes and tone controls and the pickup selector switch the main wiring loom has five plugs leading from it three of these go to the pickup selector switch and two of them go to the pickups this is quite handy because it means you don't need to solder anything and there's one wire which is what we call tinned where they've put a little bit of solder on it and this will be the earth wire basically then the wiring is ready to go you just put the appropriate controls through the appropriate holes plug everything in and off you go as a side note you can tell the difference between the tone controls and the volume controls by the absence of a capacitor on the volume control and the capacitor is that little green blob that's soldered onto the side of the control and this is what makes it into a tone control right let's have a quick look at the tuners or machine heads uh, the machine heads are pretty solid and pretty well made they're not expensive ones but they're still good quality and they'd, they'd last the lifetime of the guitar I'd imagine uh, something I've noticed at closer inspection is they've actually got marked on them whether they're right or left and they're actually numbered I was actually looking closely at the pickups thinking it was a make when I realised they're actually marked L1, L2 etc and hopefully in the instructions it'll refer to this and tell you exactly where the pickup should go on the guitar making the construction a lot simpler it's worth me pointing out because not many people have had new machine heads and it's not obvious that on the reverse side of the machine head is a disc and on there is some sticky back plastic and this can be removed once you've put the guitar together because it's only there to protect the chrome finish on the machine heads right let's look at the strings these strings are typical electric guitar strings and they are 0 0.009 on the thinnest string this is the gauge in fractions of an inch and they're 0 0.042 on the thickest string and this is a typical gauge of a set of electric guitar strings we normally just refer to them as nines if you were buying them in a guitar shop uh, these strings will get you up and running however one thing I've always found with guitars is strings really do make a difference to the sound so once you've got it all together and you've tested it with these strings it might be worth you investing a couple of quid in a slightly better set of strings and you might find it actually improves the tone quite dramatically right let's have a look at the plastic parts with these parts I'm going to be extra critical because I've already had two problems with these one with the broken knob which they did replace but also with the previous kit I reviewed which was the double cut kit the washer that goes around the pickup selector was printed really badly so the text was coming off the washer and I had to replace that now the plastic parts are all pretty standard ivory coloured Les Paul style parts apart from the truss rod cover which goes up to the headstock and is black satin finish and that seems very solid and very good however the ivory parts I'm not very pleased with reason being is there's no plastic film covering the surface now I've never seen this on a new guitar and when you combine that with the fact that they were packed together with loose metal parts in a box where they could all rattle around together there's obviously a lot of scratches in the surface of the plastic now there's really no excuse for this this is just poor very poor so I'll probably contact them and get replacements 
if you didn't want to do that you could tea cut the scratches out or you might even want to buy an upgraded version of the plastic parts from somewhere like eBay. Apart from the scratches which you could live with everything else is okay. If I try these parts on the holes that they're supposed to cover they fit very nicely and all the holes are drilled in the right place in the plastic parts and in the wood underneath. So I'll go ahead when I construct this using these plastic parts anyway just so you can see how the guitar will look standard straight out of the box. Another difference I've noticed between this kit and the DC kit is that the plastic parts on the DC kit had some screening on them whereas these plastic parts don't have any so you might want to provide your own screening. We'll look at this in more detail when we put the guitar together. Right, let's look at the remaining metalwork. Here we've got the tailpiece and the bridge. And even though these were left loose inside the bag, inside the box, and rattling against all the other metalwork, they do seem very good. There's no scratches and damage. The chrome is deep and shiny, and all the parts fit together. So the holes and the threads and where fitments lock into each other they're absolutely perfect and well engineered. If I place the posts in the holes in the body and then fit the tailpiece and bridge on them you can see they fit perfectly. They don't take any force uh, so the measurements and the way they're drilled is really good. And this is also true of the neck plate the neck plate incidentally came in its own little bag to make sure it definitely didn't get scratched. And again it fits perfectly. So coming to putting this guitar together I can't see there being any complications regarding hole alignments and things. It's actually really well done. There's also a second hardware bag inside the bag and this just contains the bracket for the scratch plate and the plate for the jack plug socket and all the screws that are necessary to put the guitar together. Uh, I've just checked these quickly and everything seems present and correct. So if you wanted to and if you weren't too fussy about the finish you could put this guitar together straight out of the box quite quickly. The only thing you'd need is a few basic tools and whilst I'm on the subject of tools it's worth me pointing out that in the bag that contains the lead there's also an allen key which is to adjust the truss rod. We'll get to this and find out if it's necessary when we put the guitar together. To summarise this review, would I recommend this kit? Yes, you're not paying too much for the quality you're getting. However, remember it is a kit and if you're buying it for the point of the kit to experiment and learn about the construction of a guitar, it's really cool. However, it's well worth pointing out you can get a brand new, beautifully finished Harley Benton SG or Les Paul style guitar for around about the same price as this kit. So, if you're looking for a cheap guitar, I wouldn't recommend the kit because once we start painting it, the costs will go up substantially. Just in case you're thinking of buying one of these kits and you're not sure which one to buy between the single cut kit which is the less poor style we've been looking at here and the double cut kit which is the SG style I've done a separate review of that one. Here's a very quick comparison between the two kits. The necks on both guitars are pretty much identical. The only difference is the way they fit to the body and this is obviously because the bodies are a different shape. The pickups are likewise the same so you could actually probably interchange the pickups between the two kits and nobody would know. The plastic work of the double cut kit or the SG style kit is superior to the Les Paul style and this is because it was covered with a film to protect it and also they put screening on the back of the essential uh, plastic that covers the electrics. The biggest difference between the two kits is the bodies and this is partially because they're both completely different styles of guitar. The Les Paul style or the single cut one we've covered in this review is a lot heavier and it has the extra complications that are entailed with the binding being there and the wiring's a little more complicated. 
So if you're looking for a simpler guitar to put together, the SG definitely wins hands down. However, if you want a bit more of a challenge, then the Les Paul would win hands down. So it really depends what you're looking for. But more than that, it probably depends what style of guitar you prefer. My plans for this guitar in future videos then is to put it together as it is, just to check all the pieces fit together and it makes a reasonably good guitar. And then to experiment with various different finishes until I find one that will really work well on the body. And then in the final video, I'll actually put it together as I intend it to be and possibly introduce some improvements and modifications. So, if you'd like to be notified when these future videos are uploaded, you might want to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.